my dear Maxwell. I'm ready to try my experiment on a human. Yes? In the morgue, there is a lethal gas suicide. An ideal specimen. Have you made arrangements? No. You know I do not work under prying eyes. You will find a way for me to work without detection. It is your chance to show me your gratitude for my generosity and protection. I will never forget what you have done for me and will do anything to help you. But the mark, dead people, Suppose we should be caught. How many times have you told me of your impersonations? That you never had a chance. Maybe your art will serve you after all. You have seen the coroner? Why not impersonate him? No. That's it! No. Impersonate him. The time has come when you can repay me for what I have done. It's horrible, I tell you. Working on the dead. Trying to bring back life. It's not natural. You with your weird idea. Haven't I stood here and nursed dying dogs? Yeah. And even that miserable cat? And for what? Or a measly roof and food. Because you took me in. And I was dumb enough. Once a ham, always a ham. You, an actor? <laughs> but don't forget, my dear Maxwell, the police would be very glad to find you. <laughs> I didn't mean I wouldn't. Of course not. In time, you may become a great man. Number 26941. Maria Altura, 24, suicide. Carbon monoxide gas, not clean. This is getting heavier and more of them every day. Between the gangsters and the auto drivers, we don't need another war to carry off the population. 
You didn't even mention suicides. <laughs> even got the coroner working overtime. Say, did you see the beaut that come in today? Did I? She's the one that has the coroner doing the night work. What? Special autopsy? Must be. I wonder who that old Santa Claus is. <laughs> I must get her out of here. She must have oxygen. Unlock the side door and back up the cart. But watch out for the guard. And as soon as he's out of the way, we'll take her out of here. You say the corpse of the young woman has been stolen? Yes. And it sure has me puzzled. Why, well, might thought I to. Uh, I'd have sworn it was the coroner himself. There must have been a very strong resemblance. Yeah, he was a dead image of him. And talked like him, too. Oh, you talked to him? No. No, he was talking to some other old fellow there that looked like Sandy Claus, as I said to Jake. He had uh, whiskers and bushy hair and his eyes were wild and... Oh, it must have been some other two fellows. Could you positively identify if you saw the party? I wouldn't swear to anything now after being so sure to the coroner. You know, Mike's description is very much like your friend Meyer shows. Uh, tell me, uh, have you seen him of late? Well, why Dr. Meyer shows is really a great research scientist. Why he has formulated some amazing methods for preserving gland extracts in the most potent state. He's no body snatcher. Well, doctors and scientists often have some queer things in their mind. Anyway, uh, I'll look into it. Oh, easy, Jones. I wouldn't like to offend the doctor. Don't worry. I'll do nothing to embarrass you. Thank you. Captain, what do I do about this? Collins, see if you have anything there on Don Maxwell. Last heard from in this city. Uh, impersonation, vaudeville. Yeah. Okay, Cap. Let's see what we got in our files on Don Maxwell. Twenty-four hours complete rest. She will recover. <laughs> Think of it. Life. Back in a body that sought oblivion. Uncanny. Possibilities terrify me. But not one word out. This is but a step. Cases like this has the element of doubt. What I want is a victim with a shattered heart. Yes, a heart. that I can replace with this beating thing I have forced life back into. <laughs> you will get me such a victim, Maxwell. It will be my supreme accomplishment. <laughs> hmm. 
him out from the morrow. They'll get the speech. I don't care where you get it. From the morgue, from the streets, the undertaker. Get one! The end will justify the means. The undertaker, around the corner. That gangster shot today. Just the thing. Murderer. Murderer. And of my benefactor. All of us who have so much to give the world. Why should the unconscious peace of the dead be disturbed? Isn't the spark that moves the maggot the self-same spark that moves the man? 
Preserving that spark in the individual is not important. What we do with the spark while we have it is important. In my assurance, the spark is gone. In Maxwell, it lives. In hell. Just nothing to bring him back. I'd better hide him. Dr. Meyer Schultz, please. Why, he isn't here. Oh, terrible. It's so very urgent. Will you tell him that Mr. Buckley is having positively alarming hallucinations? Why, he thinks he's the orangutan murderer in Poe's murder of the room morgue. Tell the doctor I must have some definite help. I'll go get him and bring him in. No. Don't do that. Meyer Schultz would be missed. Maxwell never would. Not only do I look like Meyer Schultz, I am Meyer Schultz. I will be a great man.
I'll give him a shot to relieve the nerve tension. May help him. We'll try that first. Take off your coat. Super adrenaline. No, not that. Ah. Water. That will do no harm. And I will be rid of them. Now, you will feel better. Let me. Doctor, he seems to be getting worse instead of better. My assistant shot himself. He stole him. You shot your assistant just to experiment on him? Dr. Mo I have often heard of your uncanny experiments, but this tops them all. But I think we speak the same language. Am I right? Well, I just don't get what you mean, same language. We have a common interest. When you bring your assistant back to life, his mind will do as you direct. You can do the same to Buckley. Then he will do as I 
diary. I must bring him back. I'll find that formula. I want with your cat. Oh, well, I, I didn't know. I, I thought maybe, you know, you might use them for, well, some experiments or something. Me, cat? Never. Oh, uh, that is, I think too much of Satan to use cats for the experiment. Oh, well, uh, that's what I thought, you know. And well, no harm meant, Doc. Well, so long. What am I going to do? We shall see her any minute. I must dispose of the body. I'll hide it. I'll burn it. No, I can't do that. The basement. between me and salvation, will you? Not unlike an oyster or a crepe. <laughs> but the gleam is gone. <laughs>
Do you know uh, Dr. Meyer Schultz and his assistant, Don Maxwell? Sure. They're sort of queer, I'd say. There's lots of queer goings on up there. Why, they even brought a dead dog back to life once. Well, that sounds very remarkable to me. It may be, but to my notion, those that monkeys with what they got no business to gets queer sooner or later. Maybe you're right. I know I am. Why, well, I even heard a shot up there last night. Why didn't you notify the police? That's their business, not mine. I understand from your neighbors that your cats are making noise at night. Dr. Marshall has complained. Yeah, well, he's been stealing my cats for his experiments. I know. I've been spying on them. How many cats have you? What's the matter, rat? Oh, thousands of them. Right here in my backyard. Thousands? Yeah, I got a thousand cats, too. Want to see them? What's the idea? You sell them? Oh, uh, no. It's my own idea. I'm in the business. For business. Oh, I see cat's fur. You'll get it quick. Where do the rats come in? Ah, uh, you ain't as quick as I thought. Look. You see, I figured out that rats breed faster than cats. And cat skins makes good fur. Cats eat rats. And rats eat raw meat. Uh, that is, they eat the carcasses of the cats. So, the rats eat the cats, the cats eat the rats, and I get the skin. A rats eating cats? Well, that is news. Simple, ain't it? Say, by the way, did you hear a shot last night? Maybe. I don't know. Hey, Maisie, we know you're hard-boiled. You don't have to stay in the water 30 minutes to prove it. Oh, let me alone. I may not be decent, but I'm sure gonna be clean. Say, if anyone is entitled to the first place in that bathroom, it should be me. Didn't I sign the register and welcome you all as secret guests? If it wasn't for nervy little Alice, you'd all be sinking your weary bones into the soft recesses of some park bench with light, fleecy coverlets made by the great American press. Press? That reminds me, I have pressing business. Not 
very often. Often enough, but not our way. Oh, the girl has brains. You don't have to put a zipper on her skull to prove it either. Alice, listen to this. Down Maxwell, personality impersonator gets lucky brains. Why, that's your husband, ain't it? Pipe down, will you? Let her read it. By queer quirk of fate, actor falls heir to Australian estate. This paper is trying to find him. He used to be around in vaudeville days, but we haven't heard much of him lately. The lucky ham. From now on, he'll have the company of a good egg. Well, wonders ever see. Say, I wonder if he's still with that goofy professor. He's inherited a fortune. You say a fortune? He never spoke to me of any rich relatives. He hardly knew of them himself. I believe it was his uncle in Australia. I am certainly glad to hear that. I'm sure he'll be pleased. Oh, but, oh, but don't tell him. Uh, you see, uh, I want to uh, tell him the news first. Oh, that's only natural. Mrs. Maxwell, your husband will be here at 8 tonight. All right. It was in Meyer Shore's eyes when he wanted to murder me. It was in Mrs. Buckley's eyes when she wanted to murder her husband. Alice had the gleam in her eye when she wanted to find me. She'd murder me. That's what she wants to do. I must get rid of her. Mrs. Buckley. She will help. She must help. Oh, we are lost. You are right. But before I can get him back here, you will have to help me. Uh, Mrs. Maxwell is crazy and will be here any minute. She thinks that I murdered her husband. Wants to turn me over to the police. We must keep her subdued till I can get Buckley. Down in the basement is a secret vault. We will put her down there. You quiet her by jabbing this in her arm. And in the meantime, I will go get Buckley. It sounds all right. Except the fact she's crazy. It seems to me she has the right idea. So you feel that way too. Stay in there. I'll call you when needed. At last I've really secured a living for us. We can travel or anything we want. Then you knew of the inheritance? Sure. I have one little job to accomplish, and then we can leave together. No doubt you were surprised at this disguise? Oh, no. I wouldn't be surprised at anything from you. No, honey. 
You were here in time to help me. I knew there was a catch in this someplace. But spill it. In the other room, I have a crazy woman I've been treating. Ha ha! So you've been treating. Quiet, will you? Now, this is serious. Our lives are in danger. What do you mean, are? That's what I said. Now, listen to me. I want you to help me take this woman downstairs. I'll give her a shot. Then you take care of her till I get help. Well, how about me getting the help? She's quiet now, isn't she? Yes, but she'll break out any minute. She's not afraid of a woman. So if she happens to get wild, just shove this into her arm. I'll keep it hid. And all will be well. All right, Mrs. Buckley. We will go downstairs now. I have a special treatment room there. That room, Parker. You come with me, Finney. Uh -huh. I've got orders to search this place and take everyone in it down to headquarters for questioning. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Nothing. A couple of my patients having a little argument. <laughs> take me down there. It won't do any good. There are a couple of would-be murders just fighting it out. Man, yeah. you're crazy. What kind of a place is this? Oh, I'm crazy, am I? Well, let me tell you something. Those women have the gleam. You know, you can't yeah. make time. Oh, that's where we are. Mark, get a good one. Behind this wall. Finney, tear this wall down. Murderous Satan. The wreck beneath my ritual fire. He still has a gleam. <laughs> <laughs>
They drove me to it, I tell you. They drove me with hunger, with misery and humiliation. I only wanted to amuse, to entertain. But here I am, spent my life in perfecting an art that no one wanted. No one appreciates. But I showed them Dr. Marshall, a real impersonation. <laughs> Supreme impersonation!